Ashley Quinn Lover here again. If you are new to the channel, I do all sorts of stuff. I do craft videos, role plays, and so many other fun extra things. Today, we are going to be customizing this beautiful Collecta British Spotted Mare. And no, I'm not just painting this mare. I'm going to be repositioning her neck. I have always wanted a model horse that would be in a grazing pose, and I've never been able to find one. So today, I will be repositioning her to be in a grazing pose. So yes, I will be disassembling her. So I've never ever done anything like this, and this is a totally new experience for me. So I'm super excited to do this. While I go and disassemble her, here's the craft supplies. I will obviously be using the model horse I'm planning on customizing, two part epoxy clay, some thick wire, but I sadly don't have any, so I will just be using the original Christmas wire and I'm planning on wrapping two wires around each other to make them thicker. I will also be using gloves when I work with the epoxy. I'll also be using a toothpick to sculpt, a hot glue gun to secure the wire into the horse. I would suggest two part epoxy glue stuff that I've heard of but I don't have any of that so I will just be using hot glue. I will also be using aluminum foil for in the spaces in the horse's neck and also to give the epoxy clay something to grab onto. I've heard this works really well, so I'm super excited to try this. Now here are the more scary looking tools, a drill and a saw. I will be using the saw to obviously disassemble the horse and the drill to drill holes into her to hold the wire. Another thing is, I am also asking help from my mom, so she is also helping me with this project a little bit. So I also encourage you guys to ask help from your parents or guardians. And if you guys can get your hands on one, I would recommend a jeweler saw. But I do not own one, so this will be the one that I will be using. Okay, I have now finally disassembled this girl. Super sorry if this disturbs you by any means. But this is just my customizing process. So here's piece one. This is the middle piece. I'm gonna probably just throw that away. And then here is her beautiful head. So as I told you, I want her in a glazing pose. So just gonna do something like that. So the next step would be to drill holes in the top of her body right here and in her head right here. So then I will be able to connect them in her grazing pose. So I will see you guys once I am done with that, because once again, I'm going to need help from my mom. I also suggest the same for you guys. Okay, and I am back. Now, as you can probably see, there are some holes in her body here. These are used to hold the wire that will hold her head up. And there are the holes in there as well. So I start off by just taking the drill bit and just twisting it with my hands on here and just making a small little dent. And I thought, oh, this would be a good idea. I'll just do it all the way down. But after about two minutes, my hand hurt. So then I decided to go back to, I actually ended up actually drilling it. So yeah. Now we are finally going to stick the wire in. I decided that I'll just use the thin piece as it is. And as you can tell on this one, it has a small little knot. So I just bent it over and that will help it stay in really nicely. I'll also still be using hot glue. So now let's put in the wire. Okay everyone, and this is what she is looking like. I think she's looking really good. One of my concerns was making her neck too long, so I think I might have made it almost a little shorter, but I think it looks really, really good. I have probably Googled like a thousand pictures of horses grazing, so I know exactly what she should look like, and I've also Googled pictures of horses muscles and stuff like that. So I think she's looking really good. If you didn't notice, I sanded her mane that was originally there. I've sanded that down. But I think she's looking really good. And now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is putting some aluminum foil in this empty space here. So I'm super excited. Now let's go do that step. Okay, 
Okay, now I have an aluminum foil neck course. So, this is what she looks like now. She's looking better and better. Now, the next step will be to put a thin layer of epoxy on this just to make it hard because if I try to sculpt the muscles, I'm afraid I'm going to distort them because of how wobbly she is still. So I'm just going to do a thin layer. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to poke some holes in here so when I put the epoxy around, it will be able to grab through. And just to let you all know, that was an idea from my mom, so you can thank her for that idea. I decided to go with one big hole. Okay, now I've gotten everything out to sculpt. Once again, I'm just going to do a thin layer, so it won't be nothing too fancy for right now. But this is all the stuff that I'll be using. My red mat, some water, a toothpick, and a two-part epoxy clay. Let's begin. I'm also wearing my protective gloves. This is what she is looking like. She's looking better, but she's not the best yet. If you notice, there are some lines in the clay, but that is from when I do her muscle sculpting, so it will have something else to grip onto. But my epoxy will need 24 hours to dry, so I will all see you in just one second. Hello everyone and welcome back. I know that was just a second, but it really truly has been a little more than 24 hours since I last put the epoxy on her. So now she is 100% dry. I can't put any marks in there. So now it's time to sculpt her neck. If you notice in the background, I have a few extra little models back there and they will help me with my sculpting of the neck as well as a ton of reference models. So let's get sculpting this beautiful girl's neck. Okay, everyone, and this is what she is looking like. I think she's looking okay. She still has some flaws and stuff, and for some reason, her head seriously wants to come off. So, I don't know what I'm really going to do about that, but I've added some super glue, so we'll see how long this goes. But there's always hiccups when doing crafts like this. You never know how they're exactly going to go. So, as you can start to see, there's a little bit of cracking right there. But I think she's looking pretty good, and I'm just going to let her dry for another 24 hours. So I'll see you all once again in just one second. Hello, everyone. All right, and I am back again. It's been another 24 hours for this beauty has dried. As you notice, she has a little crack, but it doesn't seem to be affecting much. So I will be using some more epoxy today because she still has some leftover mane that needs to be re-sculpted her shoulder but right now I'm gonna go ahead and sand her because as you can tell on this side she definitely needs some sanding because it didn't get as smooth as the other side and I'm thinking it's looking a little thick under there but this is my first neck so it's turned out okay so far so this is my first neck I've ever done on a model so let's get sanding Alright you all, this is what she's currently looking like. She's looking real good. I wish I could let you all touch her because she is like so smooth right now. She is like really smooth and she's looking better. Now I'm going to go ahead and add more epoxy, let it dry, sand it, and I'm probably going to repeat this process a few more times. So I'll see you all once again in just a second. Alright everyone, after hours of sanding, re-sculpting, waiting for it to dry and more sanding, I'm finally going to prime her because it's a little hard to see what needs to be sanded and what not needs to be sanded because her neck is gray and it stands out. So I'm going to give her her very first prime coat. I'm just going to be using some Apple Barrel acrylic paint. I'll see you guys after I'm done priming her because I won't be filming that scene. I'll film her final prime at the end. 
All right, everyone, this is just kind of a small base prime. Obviously, you can still see some of our spots, but I mainly did it to her neck to see what needed to be sanded and what didn't need to be sanded. So I think her back, or it doesn't look as sweet as it did before. She is looking amazing. So now I'm going to do her mane. I think she looks a little funny because she doesn't have one yet. Even not even a roached one. Sometimes you see the roached. But I'm going to give her a small, super cute, short mane that's obviously popped for because she's grazing. Another thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly use an emery board or a nail file to sand away the uh, paint that's there because I don't know how well the epoxy will do with the paint there. So I just decided that I'll just take that off. No biggie. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's sculpt her mane. One more thing is I am using several reference photos. Alright everyone, after quite a long time of sculpting this mane, she is looking amazing. She looks so cute. Look at the forelock. I did have to come up with something because of the original forelock that was there. I know it might not totally, completely go with it. Like, it should technically flop forward because of her pose, but you know what? It's cute. It's adorable. It's the way it's going to be. So once again, she's going to need 24 hours to dry, and then I'm finally going to prime her, and then we'll get painting. Ooh, are we though? Alright everyone, her mane is officially done drying. I'm so excited. Now we just need to prime her so she'll be 100% white and ready to paint. So I'm going to go ahead and let's prime this girl. Alright everyone, she is now beautifully all painted white and is ready to paint. I am going to add paint sealer right now because I'm not going to paint her in this video because this video is already really long. Second thing is, I don't know what color I'm going to paint her. You guys do. Okay, okay, let me explain what I mean by you guys know what color she's going to be. I have picked two different coat colors that this girl could possibly be, but you guys have to go to my Instagram and vote. First one will be Grulo. It is a beautiful Grulo, it's a gray dusty color paint, so it'll be a Grulo paint. And the second one is a Peacock Leopard Appaloosa. And I'm going to do her base color as Bay for that one. So you gotta go over to my Instagram and vote. You can only vote one time, please. If you want more votes in for a color that you really like, ask your friends, ask your family members to vote as well. Another thing that helps your vote is if you're subscribed to me and if you're following me on Instagram. See you all next week. Bye!